I'm Lester Holt. Tonight on Dateline, Savannah Guthrie with an NBC News exclusive. Amber Heard speaks out in her first interview since the trial watched by millions worldwide. I'm not a perfect victim. I get it. I'm not a saint. I'm not asking anyone to like me, but I asked the jury to just see me as human. There's no polite way to say it. The jury looked at the evidence you presented, they listened to your testimony, and they did not believe you. How could they not come to that conclusion? They heard over three weeks of nonstop, relentless testimony. I'm a hysterical woman. I'm a crazy woman. I can't be trusted. The DEP team argued that you were the abuser. You instigated physical violence. I never had to instigate it. I responded to it. This is a trial run amok, played out on TikTok and social media. Are you nervous as we are here today about what you can say now? Of course. I did everything I could to stand up for myself and the truth. Here's today's show co-anchor Savannah Guthrie with Amber Heard after the verdict. You're here. Some people might ask, why? Are you brave? Are you reckless? Are you vindictive? Why did you want to do an interview? The one thing I can tell you is, um, one thing I'm not is vindictive. I'm, there's no part of me that sees any, um, <laughs> this would be a really lousy way to get vengeance. What do you hope to get across here? You've had everything said about you. What do you wish people knew? You know, Savannah, as silly as it is to say this out loud, my goal, the only thing I could hope for at this point, is just want people to see me as a human being. Tonight, we talk with Amber Heard, the woman at the center of one of the most sensational media spectacles in recent memory. This is a case about the impact of Amber Heard's words on Johnny Depp. For six weeks, millions of viewers around the world were glued to their screens, hanging on every moment of this courtroom slugfest between Hollywood stars. The next move was just a bang. It just, uh, she clocked me in the jaw. It just hit me over and over and over again. And I thought, this is how I die. The trial made public a volatile marriage with private moments caught on tape. I was hitting you. It was not punching you. Babe, you're not punched. For some people, they just were frankly disgusted by the whole thing and don't have much sympathy for either one of you. Can you understand that? Absolutely. I can understand that. I would not blame the average person for looking at this and how it's been covered and not think that it is Hollywood brats at their, at their worst. I'd, but what people don't understand is it's, it's actually so much bigger than that. This is, uh, this is not only about our First Amendment right to speak. But here's the thing about the First Amendment. The First Amendment protects free speech. It doesn't protect lies that amount to defamation. And that was the issue in the case. Yes, exactly. Free speech does not protect you if you, you know, go into a crowded theater and you scream fire. We get the concept of free speech from the Greeks. But my understanding of what that means is not just the freedom to speak. It's a freedom to speak truth to power. But truth is the word. Yes. And that was the issue. And that's all I spoke. So how did it all come to this? See you down the road. Amber Laura Heard grew up outside Austin, Texas, with big dreams of Hollywood stardom. After moving to Los Angeles at the age of 17, she booked a string of TV and movie roles. In 2009, she got a call that would change her life. It was from superstar Johnny Depp. Here. Who wanted her to co-star with him in a film called The Rum Diary. 
He was 46. She was half his age. Stick abuse. Months later, Amber dropped the restraining order and they divorced. And it seemed like the Depp Heard saga might end there. What? In 2018, she landed her biggest role yet in Aquaman. That same year, as the Me Too movement was in full swing, she wrote this now infamous op-ed for the Washington Post. It included a key line, I became a public figure representing domestic abuse. You said many times you just wanted to go on with your life. When you wrote the op-ed, it raised all of this again. Why did you do that if you wanted to just go on and put this past you? The, the, because the op-ed wasn't about my relationship with Johnny. But it alluded to him. It, it was that, unmistakable. You know, what the op-ed was about was, um, you know, me loaning my voice to a bigger cultural conversation that we were having at the time. It was about reforms, uh, legislative reforms, uh, renewing the Violence Against Women Act. Did you worry, gosh, I'd love to be a person weighing in on these cultural issues, but that's going to stir this all up again? You know, that that's a, a great question and one that I wish was considered more seriously because it's important. When you wrote this op-ed, it was the height of Me Too. Legions of powerful men being canceled, losing their jobs. Did you want that to happen to Johnny Depp? Of course not. It wasn't about him. Johnny, 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 Johnny Depp disagreed and filed a $50 million defamation lawsuit against her. Good morning. Good morning. She countersued, all of which led to the recent showdown in court. I don't have to remind you that you've been found liable for defamation against Johnny Depp. Having been found liable, are you nervous as we are here today about what you can say now? Of course. I took for granted what I assumed was my right to speak. Not just about what I lived through, but what I knew. Do you feel like you could be sued again by him for defamation? I'm terrified, which is what I guess a defamation lawsuit is meant to do. It's meant to, <laughs> to take your voice. When we come back, Inside the Allegations. She's a need for conflict. She's a need for violence. The Depp team argued that you were the abuser, that you instigated physical violence. I never had to instigate it. I responded to it. As I testified to, if it meant the difference between a broken nose or a, a, a sore cheek, I would do it. People lined the streets waiting for a glimpse of them, these two movie actors. Their cars pulling up not to a red carpet, but to a Virginia courthouse. What did you see out the window of that car? Every single day I passed city blocks lined with people holding signs saying things that I couldn't repeat on television. And they had to establish barricades to protect me so I could drive into a protected entrance of the courthouse. Every single day that's how I walked in the court. There were more people waiting for her inside, packing the courtroom and watching from home. Amber's lawyers had fought to keep TV cameras out, but lost. I didn't want this to be a thing. I didn't want it to be a trial. I didn't want it to be a part of the public record. But when someone sues you, you don't really have a choice. With the burden of proof on him, Johnny Depp made his case first. To prove defamation, his lawyers needed to show that Amber's claims of abuse were false and had hurt his career. Mr. Depp, have you ever physically assaulted Ms. Heard? Never. Have you ever sexually assaulted Ms. Heard? Never. Certainly not. What have you lost as a result of Ms. Heard making these allegations against you? Nothing less than everything. Depp said there was an abuser in the courtroom, but it wasn't him, it was Amber. She has a need for conflict. She has a need for violence. It erupts out of nowhere. 
Depp described a particularly violent fight they had when he was filming in Australia. He said Amber threw a vodka bottle at him. And it made contact and shattered uh, everywhere. And then I looked down and realized that the, the, the tip of my finger had been severed. Depp's attorney showed the jury photos of injuries they said Amber had inflicted on Depp and asked members of his security staff to tell the jury what they'd seen. I heard and saw a closed fist um, contact Mr. Depp in the left side of his face. And whose fist was that? That was Miss Heard's fist, Amber Heard's fist. The Depp team argued that you were the abuser, that you instigated physical violence. Did you? I never had to instigate it. I responded to it. When you're living in violence and it becomes normal, as I testified to, you have to adapt. You adopt strategies to cope with it. If, and if it meant, as I testified to, if it meant the difference between a broken nose or a, a, a sore cheek, I would do it. What about the witnesses who said they have seen you instigate physical violence? Did they all come in and lie in court? I'm, you know, less interested in sitting here, you know, relitigating it with you. I am not here to call any of his witnesses any names. I'm not here to do that. I'm, I'm here to just kind of talk about it from yeah. what it felt like for me as the person who sat there. Non-stop, relentless testimony from paid employees and towards the end of the trial, randos, <laughs> as I say. Litigating it so with you, you don't I am not here to call any of his witnesses any names. I'm not here to do that. I'm, I'm here to just kind of talk about it from yeah. what it felt like for me as the person who sat there. There was one more voice Depp's legal team wanted the jury to hear, Amber's. They had audio recordings of the couple talking about how Amber sometimes got physical. You want to smack my ear again? And so it uh, resounds in my cranium. Do you like that? I love you. Huh? I love you. I'm sorry. In another recording, Amber was less apologetic. I'm sorry I hit you like this, but I did not punch you. I did not deck you. I was hitting you. There are tapes in which you acknowledge hitting. There are tapes in which you say, I started the fight. I know much has been made of, of these audio tapes. And as I testified on the stand, what you would hear in those clips are not evidence of what was happening. It was evidence of a negotiation of how to talk about that with your abuser. But I am looking at a transcript that says, he says, you start physical fights and you say, I did start a physical fight. I did start a physical fight. Yeah, you did. But you're just telling me today, I never started a physical fight, and here you are on tape saying you did. As I testified on the stand about this, is that when your life is at risk, not only will you take the blame for things that you shouldn't take the blame for, but when you're in an abusive dynamic, psychologically, emotionally, and physically, you don't have the luxury of saying, hey, this is black and white, because it's anything but when you're living in it. He says he never hit you. Never. Is that a lie? Yes, it is. He says he's never struck any woman. His lawyers argued at trial. None of his other prior relationships, not one woman has come forward and said he physically hit them. You were the only one. Look what happened to me when I came forward. Tasia Van Rie called the police after Amber Heard reportedly grabbed her hand and struck her after they had an argument at the Seattle Tacoma International Airport in 2009. Amber was charged with misdemeanor assault in the fourth degree. At some point together in the Seattle airport, 
um, in 2009, and Amber was arrested for domestic violence. And what happened, we're told, is that they got in some kind of argument, and Amber struck her girlfriend. Grabbed her by the arm and struck her, at least allegedly, and the girlfriend got pissed off. Amber got arrested, taken to the police station, her mugshot taken, she was booked. She ended up... This is the state of Washington versus Amber Van Ree, cause number CPS 013529. Stephanie Sada on behalf of the state. Ms. Van Ree is present in custody with counsel and I think that's your name. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Michelle Shaw and I apologize. I walked out of the courtroom, Your Honor. Um, the state is declining to file charges at this time. Okay, what that means, ma'am, is no charges will be filed against you today. However, that could happen in the future. Therefore, we want to make sure we have your correct address. Sycamore Avenue in Los Angeles, right? Yes. So you're notified by me if anything happens within the statute of limitations. Statute of limitations on a case like this is two years. So make sure that if your address changes, that you notify the court. Otherwise, it could result in warrants, and that would be a DV case. And that can have cross state implications. So Thank you. just because you're in California, it wouldn't uh, provide you any relief from the DV designation for the tomorrow. Yes, Your Honor. Any questions about that? No, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. 2009, you were arrested for domestic violence uh, committed against Tasha Van Ray. Asked and answered. Is that what Same you just objections. talked about? Did I miss something? Isn't Same it a objection. fact, Miss Heard, that on September 14th, you were in fact taken to jail? It wasn't dropped immediately. Same objections, Vegas. Would be. Same objections. Isn't it a fact, Miss Heard, that you spent the night in jail? from September, 20, September 14th to September 15th, 2009, as a result of your arrest for domestic violence. Same objections. It's irrelevant. Is that true? 352, she's already answered what happened. It's Is that vague. true? It's argumentative, already, it's harassing. You just wanna you know, get your harassment in. Go uh, ahead. Let the record reflect Mr. I Carter's directing her not to answer. Did you I spend the night in jail? You. I, yes. never, I never said don't answer. I never the said that. Is about to that's not my fault. Yes, it is. Because she keeps cutting me off every time I Why say are you something. Yelling? There's no need to yell, Mr. Hart. Well, I have to be heard. Everyone's talking over me. You've got a whole wall of lawyers over Ms. there who are talking over me. May I continue? Except for Hans. Can Ms. I say something? Ms. Hurd, Ms. Hurd, isn't it a fact that Tasha Van Ray on September 14th, 2009, claimed to the police that you would hit her arm? Same objection. No? I don't know anything about this. Answer how, give a full answer please. I don't know anything about the claim that you just made about what Tasha said or did not say. I can't possibly know that. I know nothing about what you just said. Isn't it a fact that on September 14th, <coughs> you hit Tasha Van Ray in her arm? No. Isn't it a fact on September 14th, you broke the necklace off of Tasha Ren Van Ray's uh, neck. 352, it's necklace. irrelevant to these proceedings. Argumentative harassing. Isn't it a fact that Tasha Van Ray reported to the police that you had hit her arm? 352, irrelevant, vague, uh, argumentative and harassing. And speculation. Isn't it a fact, Ms. Uh, Heard, it's heard still. That you know very well that your spouse, that your domestic partner, Tasha Van Ray, uh, requested that you uh, uh, be arrested for domestic violence. Call, you need to please let me get my objections in. Would you? This was not the first time Amber Heard and Johnny Depp faced off in court. There was another trial dealt with the same substantive issues, handled differently by a judge instead of a jury. Johnny Depp sued The Sun, a British tabloid, over an article it published describing him as a wife beater. The case went to trial two years ago in the UK. There were no cameras in court. The judge in that case found that most of Amber Heard's allegations of abuse were substantially true. Johnny Depp has lost his legal battle with a British tabloid. We prevailed overwhelmingly. The jury in the U.S. trial wasn't allowed to hear about that judgment. And Amber says that by the time she got up to tell her side of the story... I do. ...the court of public opinion here had already turned against her. After three and a half weeks, I took the stand and 
saw the courtroom packed full of Captain Jack Sparrow fans who were vocal, energized, who had came, come from all ends of the world. We've been here all night long. I took two buses, two trains, and I had to walk a half an hour. And the jury saw all of that. During five days on the stand, Amber told her version of the toxic relationship. She said the physical abuse began when they were first dating and continued throughout their marriage. When I was walking out of the bedroom, slapped me across the face. I turned to look at him and I said, Johnny, you hit me. You just hit me. I, I testified on the stand. I got hit for a very long time before I knew how to even try to defend myself. Amber said the abuse usually happened in private, but told the jury Depp once kicked her on a plane in front of his entourage. I felt so embarrassed that he could kick me to the ground in front of people. In all, she described at least 12 times when Depp hit her. And he's punching me, punching me, with a close fist punching me. She said it often happened when he was drunk or on drugs. Right now, as you sit here today, do you stand by your testimony and your accusations against Johnny Depp about abuse? Of course, and I will to my dying day. I know what happened to me. I'm here as a survivor. I, to my dying day, will stand by every word of my testimony. To support her allegations, her attorney showed photos of injuries they said were caused by death. He testified yesterday that the only difference between these two photographs is that the light was turned on. That's what it appears to be, yes. The light is on in both of these pictures, oh! though. Isn't that right? It looks to me like the one on the left has She's the vanity light, the makeup lights, you know, the more yellow-hued ones that go around the mirror Whoa! on, and then the one on the right looks like it doesn't have those. Isn't it true you just edited these photographs? No, yes. I've never edited a photograph. Didn't you just enhance what the saturation this? for one of these photos to make oh your face God. look more red? Uh, no, that's incorrect. I didn't touch it. They offered him as two separate photos. You were sitting here in this courtroom when Mr. Photo. Isaac Baruch testified to see you, seeing wow. you the week after May 21, 2016, correct? I was here. Mr. Baruch testified that he saw you on May 22nd while you were changing the locks of your penthouse. Do you recall that testimony? I do. I just don't know if he was right about the date, but I do remember him saying that. Testify it was his birthday, the day after his birthday. I believe it was. Mr. Baruch testified that he saw you repeatedly in the days following also, correct? That's correct. Fake photo. And Mr. Baruch testified that he saw no marks or injuries on your face, correct? That is what he's testified to. You were also here in this court when Mr. Sean Bett testified to seeing you on the evening of May 21, 2016. Is that right? Um, you were here. That's correct. Mr. Bett also testified that he saw no marks or injuries on your face that evening, correct? I realize that's what he said. You were sitting here in this courtroom when Officer Melissa Sines testified here by deposition go. about being called All to the, the Eastern lies, Columbia right? building on May Man. 21st, 2016. Here come the cops. Here come right? everybody. I saw her testimony, yes. Nobody saw you nothing. You heard Officer Sines testify that she did not see any injuries on you that night, nope. correct? I heard her testify she did not consider this injured. No. She said she Ms. did not. Officer yes. Sines testified that she met with you and she did not see any injuries on your face. Isn't that correct? Do you believe that you um, had enough time viewing Ms. Heard to determine whether or not uh, she had sustained any injuries? Uh, yes, I do. And, you deter and did you determine that she sustained any injuries? I determined that she did not sustain any injuries. And how, in the hallway, how far were you standing from Ms. Heard? Uh, it was close, probably like two to five feet. Okay. And at that time, did you notice any injuries on Ms. Heard? I did not. Okay. Uh, were you looking to see if she had any injuries at that time? Yes, I was. And um, so you were looking to see if Ms. Heard had any injuries and you determined that she did not. Is that accurate? Correct. Okay. And was the lighting good enough in the hallway for you to make that determination? Yes, the hallways was well lit. Correct. 
she That's did she not said. consider this injury. Ms. Heard, my question is a bit more nuanced. So is my answer. You said these were pictures of your injuries that night. But let's look at them. These were, you said these were two separate pictures. They're the same picture, except one is light and then one is dark, right? It's edited. Obviously, we can all see it's edited. Lie number one. Lie number two. Let's talk about all the people who saw you that night and saw no injuries. Right? The cop, the doorman, the other set of cops. One alleged beating happened in 2015 before Amber appeared on The Late Late Show with James Corden. Exhibit 16. A makeup artist saw Amber the day of the alleged incident and said she didn't see any injuries. But the next day... She had a discoloration here under both eyes and on the bridge of the, and the, bridge of the nose. Uh, and she had what I would call a split lip. If I witness... Or... A nurse testified she saw Amber's bloody lip. And she told you that that was a result of um, the altercation with Mr. Depp, right? Right. And Amber's sister took the stand and told the story of one fight that she said included Depp hitting her, something Depp denies. He comes up behind me, strikes me in the back, kind of just somewhere over here. He strikes me in the back. I hear Amber shout, don't hit my sister. She smacks him, lands one. And then he grabbed Amber by the hair with one hand and was whacking her repeatedly in the face with the other. Jennifer Howell. Uh, one of Depp's attorneys asked Whitney Enriquez, do you know Jennifer Howell? <clears throat> you know who Jennifer Howell is, right, Ms. Enriquez? I do. She's the founder of the Art of Elysium nonprofit. She is. And you worked there for a time, didn't you? I did. Around May 2015, you actually moved in with Ms. Howell, right? May 2015? Yes. And you moved out of the penthouses because at that point you and your sister were fighting, right? It was, yeah, it was around the time that, you know, he had accused me of leaking stories and that was the impetus of me leaving. And you, te you testified earlier, I think, that he had asked you to sign an NDA, right? At some point. Yeah. And that was around the same time that he was concerned you were leaking stories about their wedding to the media? I believe so. Um, you and Ms. Howell were close? We were. Close enough that you lived with her for around a year? I don't recall if it was that long. And you confided in, you confided in Ms. Howell, right? About some things, yes. She was my friend. You called her your chosen sister? Jennifer Howell. And she said yes. Well, guess what? Apparently, they were really good friends. And after she moved out of the penthouse, she moved to Jennifer Howell's apartment and stayed with her for a while. Jennifer Howell filed a declaration with the court after the UK testimony in the UK trial of Whitney Enriquez saying that Whitney Enriquez told her a totally different story about what happened on the staircase. Jennifer Howell wrote in this court document that Whitney Enriquez said that um, Johnny Depp was hit by Amber Heard, not the other way around. And she said uh, apparently that she feared that uh, that Amber Heard would kill Johnny Depp. This is what this Jennifer Howell woman said. So, Mr. Depp, we've talked about this. Uh, Amber's side also played its own snippets of audio. Amber talking to Depp about acts of violence. Put your cigarettes out on someone else. You have consequences for your actions. That's it. Shut up, fat ass. A week prior, after you beat the out of me. What happened? Then there was this video. Did something happen to you this morning? I don't think so. That's crazy. Oh, you're crazy. Yeah, you're crazy. Have you drunk this whole thing this morning? You would agree that you were violent in that clip, correct? Um, clearly I was having a bad time. Yes, you didn't I, I did assault um, a couple of cabins but I did not touch Ms. Heard. You, you poured yourself a, um, a mega pint of red wine, correct? A mega pint? <laughs> yeah. I poured myself a large glass of wine. Right. And remember what Depp said about that fight in Australia when his finger was severed? <laughs> Amber denied hurting him and said on that trip, she was the real victim. <laughs> 
Amber went on to describe a harrowing incident of sexual abuse. She testified that Depp assaulted her with a bottle. But I could just feel this pressure. And I remember her just not wanting to move because I didn't know if the bottle that he had inside me was broken. In that courtroom, I am testifying about, a, about sexual assault and domestic violence next to a jury in front of a whole packed courtroom of people who are expressing their vocal support and disdain for me. Amber had told her story. Sitting here today, Ms. Now she would be forced to defend it. Coming up, what the jury never saw. There's a, a binder worth of notes that were taken by my doctor. Her notes represented years of what was going on. Your lies have been exposed to the world multiple times, right? I haven't lied about anything I've been here to say. After describing the abuse she says she suffered at the hands of Johnny Depp, Amber Heard then faced his attorney, Camille Vasquez. Ms. Heard, Ms. Like Heard. Vasquez set out to convince jurors they couldn't trust a word that came out of Amber's mouth. You got physical with Mr. Depp often during your relationship, didn't you? I had to defend myself as best I could. You just couldn't control yourself, could you, Ms. Heard? Who was the real monster in this relationship, Ms. Heard? Depp's team argued that Amber had a history of being untruthful. Case in point. Seven million dollars in total was donated to, I split it between the ACLU and Children's Hospital of Los Angeles. They played a clip from an interview on Dutch TV where she said she had donated her seven million dollar divorce settlement to charity. But it was revealed at trial that you haven't done so yet. Do you think that raised questions as to your credibility with the jury? Well, I think, you know, look, when you say to someone, I bought a house, are you lying? Because you have not paid for it in full at that point? I made a, a pledge and that pledge is made over time by its nature. You're splitting hairs a little bit there because when you say I donated, you know that everybody thinks that you've donated it, not that you've pledged it. So for the jurors sitting there, do you think they felt like that was you getting caught in a lie? I, I don't know because so much of the, I feel like so much of the trial was meant to cast aspersions on who I am as a human, my credibility, to call me a liar in, in every way you can. And that more. was the trial. It was a credibility contest. Depp's team also painted Amber as an attention seeker, saying she wrote that 2018 op-ed to coincide with the release of Aquaman. And they suggested this was a publicity stunt, a way to raise your profile at a time when these issues were quite relevant. It was one of those few moments of levity in the trial when I heard it suggested that my op-ed in the Washington Post could potentially boost sales for an international multi-million dollar superhero franchise movie that I was starring in. It's the other way around. You know, if anything, we we're trying to get more awareness and attention on the issues within the article. It wasn't a publicity stunt or a way to... It's the opposite, you know. Depp's lawyers called witnesses to challenge Amber's stories of abuse. One of Depp's friends testified about that fight on a plane when Amber says he kicked her. And it's your testimony that Mr. Depp didn't kick Amber? I, I didn't see anything like that. And to counter the photographic evidence of Amber's injuries, Depp's lawyers showed the jury a slew of pictures of the actress looking unblemished after the alleged abuse. Your nose doesn't appear to be injured in any of these pictures, does it, Ms. Heard? That's why I'm wearing makeup. Amber testified that some of the photos Depp's lawyers brought to court were taken days, even weeks after the alleged injuries occurred. So, I'm um, sorry, just so I understand better, there were several incidents in March. Which one are you asking me about? The time that he hit you several times in the face wearing rings. Well, he pretty in much March always... March of 2013. 
Right. What are you asking me? I'm sorry. He was wearing rings on that occasion? I pretty much always knew him to wear rings. Okay. Let's please pull up Defendant's Exhibit 170A, which is already in evidence, Your Honor. You testified that this is a picture you took after that incident, right, Ms. Hurd? Yes, that was one where he grabbed me. And hit you in the face so many times that you don't remember. Isn't that correct? That's correct. And there's no injuries to your face in this picture, are there? Not that this picture shows. And there's no medical records reflecting that you sought treatment after this alleged incident either. I did not seek medical treatment at this time. Amber testified that some of the photos Depp's lawyers brought to court were taken days, even weeks after the alleged injuries occurred. This is a picture of you and Mr. Depp at the event the night after Mr. Depp allegedly whacked you in the face so hard you thought he had broken your nose. He did whack me in the face and I did think it broke my nose. And this is you the night after? Yes, it is. Let's please pull up plaintiff's exhibit 1254. This is also a picture of you at the same event, correct, Ms. Hurd? That is correct. Move to admit plaintiff's exhibit 1254. All right, 1254 in evidence, you can publish. Thank you. And just to confirm now that the jury can see it, this is a picture of you at the same event, the night after Mr. Depp allegedly whacked you in the face so hard you thought he broke your nose. Uh, this is a picture of me um, after he did whack me in the face. The night after, right? Yes, it is. I believe it was the night after, yes. Amber testified that some of the photos Depp's lawyers brought to court were taken days, even weeks after the alleged injuries occurred. Your nose doesn't appear to be injured in any of these pictures, does it, Ms. Hurd? I'm wearing makeup. Your nose doesn't appear to be injured in any of these pictures, does it, Ms. Hurd? That's why I'm wearing makeup. Right. And makeup covers up swelling, right? Makeup will not cover up swelling. Ice will, though. Ice will cover up swelling? Ice reduces swelling. Normally, the swelling after that kind of injury is not as bad as you might imagine. And for me, it wasn't that bad. I have a picture of it underneath the makeup. That's how I know how to reference it. A picture you haven't produced or shown to this jury, right, Ms. Hurd? I have, so I produced everything. But you haven't shown it to this jury? I would very much like to. It's not my job. You also told this jury that you wore a backless dress to the Mordecai premiere that very same night. I did. And you testified that you were checking for bruises in the car on the way back, on the way to the event to make sure that there, there were, quote, no visible marks, right? I was checking on my phone um, after the event to see, to make sure that nothing, that you couldn't see anything. Your testimony was that you were checking in the car on the way to the event to make sure that there were no marks on your back. Uh, perhaps I misspoke or I misunderstood. It was on the way back from it was after I was concerned. After, you know, concerned that there would be marks in any photographs since we were being photographed at Johnny's press event. And you didn't show this jury a picture of you in that backless dress though, did you? Um, I don't know what you mean, I'm sorry. You didn't show this jury a picture of you at the Mordecai premiere wearing a backless dress, did you? I haven't had the opportunity to. Okay. I assume you have it. I do. Um, let's please pull up plaintiff's exhibit 1256. <coughs> this is a picture of you and Mr. Depp, or the back of you, at the Mordecai premiere in Tokyo, correct, Ms. Hurd? That is correct. Your Honor, I move to admit and publish this picture. All right, one, two, five, six in evidence. This is you in the backless dress at the Mordecai premiere in Tokyo, right? That is correct. You would agree that there are no bruises or visible marks on your back in this picture? No, not that I could see. I'll show you one other photo. If we could please have plaintiff's exhibit 1257.
This is a front angle picture of you and Mr. Depp at that premiere, correct? That is correct. Move to admit plaintiff's exhibit 1257. All right, 1257 it is. I'll show you one more picture. Plaintiff's exhibit 1258. And again, Ms. Heard, this is you and Mr. Dad with the Mordecai premiere? Yes, it is. Move to admit plaintiff's exhibit 1258. No objection. All right, 1258 in evidence. Publish. And that's the backless dress, right, Ms. Heard? That is correct. What I learned in that trial is it's, it's never going to be good enough. If you have proof, then it was a scheme. It was a hoax. If you don't have proof, it didn't happen. If you have a bruise, it's fake. If you don't have a bruise, then it did, violence clearly didn't hurt you. If you told people, then you're hysterical. If you didn't tell anyone, it didn't happen. You were sitting here in this courtroom when Mr. Isaac Baruch testified to see you, seeing you the week after May 21, 2016, correct? I was here. Mr. Baruch testified that he saw you on May 22nd while you were changing the locks of your penthouse. Do you recall that testimony? I do. I just don't know if he was right about the date, but I do remember him saying that. Testified it was his birthday, the day after his birthday. I believe it was. Mr. Baruch testified that he saw you repeatedly in the days following also, correct? That's correct. And Mr. Baruch testified that he saw no marks or injuries on your face, correct? That is what he's testified to. You were also here in this court when Mr. Sean Bett testified to seeing you on the evening of May 21, 2016. Is that right? Um, you were here. That's correct. Mr. Bett also testified that he saw no marks or injuries on your face that evening, correct? I realize that's what he said. You were sitting here in this courtroom when Officer Melissa Sines testified by deposition about being called to the Eastern Columbia building on May 21st, 2016, right? I saw her testimony, yes. And you heard Officer Signs testify that she did not see any injuries on you that night, correct? Do you believe that you um, had enough time viewing Ms. Heard to determine whether or not she had sustained any injuries? Uh, yes, I do. And, you deter and did you determine did she sustain any injuries? I determined that she did not sustain okay. any injuries. Okay. And how, in the hallway, how far were you standing from this herd? Uh, it was close, probably like two to five feet. Okay. And at that time, did you notice any injuries on this herd? I did not. Okay. Uh, were you looking to see if she had any injuries at that time? Yes, I was. And um, so you were looking to see if Ms. Herd had any injuries and you determined that she did not. Is that accurate? Correct. Okay. And was the lighting good enough in the hallway for you to make that determination? Yes, the hallways was well lit. You heard Officer Signs testify that she did not see any injuries on you that night, correct? I heard her testify she did not consider this injured. No. Miss Officer Signs testified that she met with you and she did not see any injuries on your face. Isn't that correct? Okay. And at that time, did you notice any injuries on this herd? I did not. She did not consider this injury. Ms. Heard, my question is a bit more nuanced. So is my answer. Yeah. My question is more nuanced. You sat in this courtroom while Officer Sines testified that she saw you the night of May 21, 2016, face to face and didn't see any injuries on your face. Isn't that correct, Ms. Heard? I believe she was testifying about these photographs and she said that I was not injured in them. 
Is it your testimony under oath now that Officer Signs testified that she saw injuries on you when she saw you in person on May 21? Sorry, let me clarify. I was testifying that I know that that's what Officer Signs said, that she didn't consider my red puffy face injured. That's what she said. The red puffy face, that was your counsel's question, correct? That was she her said, testimony in the UK. That's incorrect, and you know that, Ms. Heard. I disagree. It's just inconvenient for you that Officer Science didn't see injuries on you on May 21, 2016. Isn't it doesn't that matter right? what's convenient for me. Right. Officer Tyler Haddon also testified by deposition about being called to the Eastern Columbia building on May 21, 2016, and he also testified no injuries on your face on May 21, 2016. Isn't that correct? They both said that they did not consider me injured. They did not see injuries on your face on May 21, 2016. Isn't that what their testimony was? What their testimony was is that they did not consider what my face looked like to be injury. They didn't consider what they walked on in the house damage, but it was. You were sitting here when Officer William Gatlin testified by deposition about being called on May 21 to the Eastern Columbia building, and he also did not observe any injuries on you, did he? he and that's what he testified to. He didn't even know which one I was. No, I think we all saw on video camera, you identify yourself, isn't that correct? I had to because of how far away he was. He didn't even know, he didn't even know who he was but there after you see. identified yourself, he looked at you, isn't that correct? From a distance, yes. And he didn't see any visible injuries either, did he? I don't know what he saw. He testified that he didn't see any visible injuries, did I he? I would believe that he didn't, yes. You were also in this courtroom when Alejandro Romero, who worked at the front desk at the Eastern Columbia building, testified about seeing you on May 25th, 2016. Isn't that correct? That is correct. I think he said the 25th. Yeah. And Mr. Romero testified that he didn't see any swelling or bruises on your face when you were talking to him at the front desk. He wouldn't have. No, he wouldn't have, even though he had a habit, because his parents taught him correctly, to look into someone's eyes when speaking to them. Isn't that correct? I know that's what he testified to, yes. Also told this when it came to Amber's most explosive testimony, the sexual assault, Depp's team pointed out the allegations only came up after her divorce. In court, attorney Camille Vasquez pulled no punches. You testified you bled from your vagina as a result of that sexual assault. Yes. There aren't any medical records reflecting that you sought medical treatment for any of these injuries, are there? I did not seek uh, medical treatment after Australia, no. Not for the rape? No, I did not want to tell anyone. There's no experience like being cross-examined. What was that experience like for you? One of the scariest, most intimidating thing for anybody, talking about sexual violence, is not being believed, being called a liar or being humiliated. Throughout the trial, both sides fought to get additional evidence in front of the jury to bolster their claims. Some of it was deemed hearsay under the rules of evidence and declared inadmissible by the judge. Is there one piece of evidence that you wish the jury had seen that you could point to? You say, ah, oh, this would have made the difference. Yeah. What is it? There's a, a binder worth of years of notes dating back to 2011 from the very beginning of my relationship that were taken by my doctor who I was reporting the abuse to. Fact number one, Amber Heard testified in both the UK case and here in the Virginia case that the first incident of Johnny actually being physical with her in an abusive manner was in 2013. Now that's extremely important. We got a photograph of Amber Heard with what looks like a bloody lip. And she wanted to show this to the jury. Her lawyer certainly did. And the judge said no. And the reason is, is because she testified about an incident uh, that where she says Johnny hit her and split her lip. Um, and then they wanted to submit this photo. The problem is that in these trials, 
there's something called discovery. And yeah. that means each side has to trade information on what they've got. Which is standard operating procedure. It's usually done before the trial. Like, it always is done before course, the trial. Yeah. Of course. And so this wasn't produced. Uh, Johnny's team objected, and the uh, judge said, you know, you're right. This should have been done during his discovery. So we're not going to let you submit the picture. So we got the picture. And it does appear to show a bloody lip. Split lip, yep. However. And her holding a little note, right? Mm, there's an issue. Timing. Timing. And well, is we're, not, we're not talking, this is not a joke about comedy. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Right. The first rule of... Uh, um, the first rule of comedy, right. no. This is also the first rule of trials. Yeah. yeah. And evidence. So yeah. there's okay. a problem because remember, Johnny Depp sued the tab a tabloid in uh, the UK. Right. And he said in that trial, you know, that this was defamatory, that they would call him a wife beater and all that. Amber testified in that trial. Right. And she testified about this incident. And she said that the incident occurred, the first incident of violence occurred in 2013. Man that I loved. And he would make me feel so loved. Like it would get, I would feel so distant from that thing that was so scary that I would not even recognize the two. And that was how, you know, our relationship kind of started to develop in that first year. Do you remember the first time that he physically hit you? Yes. Please tell the jury about it. <laughs> it was so, it's seemingly so stupid, so in, like insignificant. Oh, never forget it. It changed, it changed my life. I was sitting on the couch and we were talking, we were having a, like a normal conversation, you know, just, there was no fighting, no argument, nothing. And, um, he was drinking and um, I didn't realize at the time, but I think he was using cocaine because it was like there was a jar, a jar of cocaine out on the table. I, re I realized that sounds weird, but it's like oh, an actual vintage jar of it. But I didn't see him use it at the time, so I, I didn't really factor that in. I just, you know, he's drinking and we're talking and it's there's music playing and he's smoking cigarettes and we're sitting next to each other on the couch. And I asked him about the tattoo he has on his arm. And to me, it just looked like um, black marks. It, like I didn't know. I didn't know what it said. It just looked like muddled, faded tattoo that was hard to read. And I said, "What does it? What does it say?" And he um, said, "It says why no." It says why no. And I, um, I didn't see that. I thought he was joking uh, because it didn't look like it said that at all. And I laughed. It was that simple. Um, I, I just laughed because I thought he was joking, and slapped me across the face. And I laughed. I laughed because I, I didn't know what else to do, I thought, this must be a joke. This must be a joke. Because I i didn't know what was going on. I just stared at him, kind of laughing still, thinking that he was gonna start laughing too to tell me it was a joke, but he didn't. He said, you think it's so funny? You think it's funny, bitch? You think you're a funny bitch? And he slapped me again. Incident of violence occurred in 2013. Which was wrong. Sounds like, which that, that's what she's saying now. That, that oh, I was actually wrong about that. Right, well, but in the UK, she's testified under yeah, oath so she that, was the, under that oath. the violent relationship, so, the violent so, aspects of the relationship, started in 2013. Here's the problem: we get the metadata and of the this photo. The metadata of the photo shows is 2012. 2012. And her team is now saying, oh, she got the date wrong in the UK trial. She meant to say 2012. She got her her therapy therapist records now. So that so that's what they're trying to kind of clear up. Amber, when did the first act of physical violence by Mr. Depp occur? Objection asked and answered. No, overruled. Good. It would have been early 2012. And how did you determine this? I reviewed my therapist. Objection, notes. hearsay. I, 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 she hasn't even answered it, Your Honor. All right, I'll allow the answer. By reviewing my therapist notes. Objection, right, hearsay. I'll sustain the objection. Your Honor, but it's not offered to prove the truth I'll of the matter asserted. It's, it's explaining what she looked at. I'll sustain the objection. Okay. Um, when did you earlier believe the first act of physical violence occurred? Well, I had always believed um, up until recently that it was, it had started later, um, that the violence started around early 2013, not early 2012. Now, you testified earlier that the first act of physical violence by Mr. Depp related to the Winona Wino tattoo. Do you recall that testimony? I do. Okay. Is that, does that change your testimony realizing that this is earlier? Was this in fact still the first act? Objection leading. 
uh, sustained. What was, the, what was the first act? Objection, asked and answered. Sustained. Um, how do you remember the first act of violence? Uh, well, you never forget it. That's how I remember it. It changes your life forever. You never forget the first time someone hits you like that. I just had the date wrong. Okay. And how, did, how is it that you think you got the date wrong? Objection calls for speculation. Overruled. Um, I'm embarrassed to say I think I would have liked to have believed that the period of time in which I had to fall in love with Johnny, in which we fell in love, and he was sober, and he wasn't violent to me, lasted for a lot longer than it did. I think I would have liked to have believed that I, I wasn't hit so early in the relationship and still stayed. He was also sober for a period in 2012, which was a peaceful time for us, in which we fell in love. So I had kind of allowed myself, I guess, uh, to forget that the beginning of that period, 2012, before he got sober, was, was really violent and chaotic as well. Which, by the way, Can is I, possible. Abuse victims sure, don't ha are, don't operate along a, a strict chronology. They deal with their abuse. It comes back to them in sure. ways they may not remember timelines. However, in a trial, which is uh, largely dependent on a group of unknown people believing your story, right. and credibility is everything, these things begin to mount. That's why we looked at the makeup palette yeah. and when the makeup palette came up. That's why but, we're looking at this photo. One piece of evidence that you wish the jury had seen that you could point to, you say, ah, oh, this would have made the difference. Yeah. What is it? There's a, a binder worth of years of notes dating back to 2011 from the very beginning of my relationship that were taken by my doctor. Amber, when did the first act of physical violence by Mr. Depp occur? Objection, asked and answered. No, overruled. Go ahead. It would have been early 2012. And how did you determine this? I reviewed my therapist. Objection, notes. hearsay. I, 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 she hasn't even answered it, Your Honor. All right, I'll allow the answer. By reviewing my therapist's notes. Objection, right, hearsay. I'll sustain the objection. Your Honor, but it's not Who I was reporting the abuse to. That doctor was Amber's therapist at the time. We looked at notes the doctor took during some of their sessions, which show that as far back as 2012, Amber was talking about physical abuse. In January of that year, she told her therapist, Depp hit her, threw her on the floor. Eight months after that, ripped her nightgown, threw her on bed. And in 2013, the therapist's notes say he threw her against a wall and threatened to kill her. I am talking about what's happening to me in real time when she was taking contemporaneous notes of what was happening. Amber's lawyers also showed us text messages that were excluded from trial, like this one she sent to another therapist saying, Johnny did a number on me. I thought I had a concussion. And this text message she says she sent to her father after that disputed incident on the plane. She wrote, he kicked me in front of everyone. I testified I was attacked on that flight and I was attacked in front of people. And I, when I got off the plane, sent messages to people about what had happened. I'm angry because this happened. Can you believe he did this and this and this, you know? And one of the people I reached out to was my father. Depp's lawyers say the judge's rulings were fair and a Depp spokesperson told us, it's unfortunate that the defendant and her team are back to repeating, reimagining and relitigating matters that have already been decided by the court. Amber thinks the case wasn't just decided inside the courtroom. She believes what happened outside made all the difference. Coming up. The majority of this trial was played out outside of a courtroom. The social media storm. Did it affect the verdict? You think the jury saw it? How could they not? When Dateline continues. There's a text message where Johnny promises total global humiliation for you. 
Do you feel like that came true? I know he promised it. I testified to this. I'm not a, a good victim, I get it. I'm not a likable victim. I'm not a perfect victim, I get it. I'm not a saint. I'm not asking anyone to like me. But when I testified, I asked the jury to just see me as human and hear his own words, which is a promise to do this, a promise to humiliate me, a promise to ruin me. It feels as though he has. As the trial unfolded inside that Virginia courtroom, Amber Heard and Johnny Depp were being judged in the court of public opinion. This Johnny Depp, Amber Heard thing has been going on for a little bit now, and it's gotten pretty wild. Though both stars had their supporters on social media, there is no question that the internet sided against Amber Heard. Ew, this is so cringe. Guilty. I mean, this was a sort of medieval orgy of hatred. Michelle Goldberg is an opinion columnist for The New York Times. I think it was, you know, people really enjoyed joining in. That's, you know, often the case with mob behavior. And I think that's essentially what this was. It was kind of, you know, misogynist mob behavior. Online, people picked apart Amber's every move. Videos ridiculed her facial expressions and accused her of faking emotion on the stand. This... This is just a fake crying train wreck you can't look away from. Johnny, you hit me. You hit me. It was really striking to me to see all of these people engaging in this trend of reenacting her testimony. And I was walking out of the bedroom, slapped me across the face. I don't think I've ever seen anything like this. A domestic violence trial becoming this source of national hilarity. One of the most infamous moments in the trial was when Johnny Depp suggested she may have defecated on their bed. And on my side of the bed was human fecal matter. Amber denied it, but that didn't stop the internet from branding her with a viral nickname. I saw what was happening to me in real time. I don't care what one thinks about me um, or what judgments you want to make about what happened in the privacy of my own home and my marriage behind closed doors. I, I don't presume the average person should know those things, and so I don't take it personally. But even somebody who is sure I'm deserving of all this hate and vitriol, even if you think that I'm lying, you still couldn't tell me Look me in the eye and tell me that you think on social media there's been a fair representation. You cannot tell me that you think that this has been fair. If Amber was the villain, then Johnny Depp was often portrayed as the hero. This dude's such a stud. <laughs> People online found his grasp of the law charming. That's your say, I guess. I'm learning and testimony about his drinking only seemed to endear him more to his digital fans. You poured yourself a, um, a mega pint of red wine, correct? A mega pint. During the six week trial, jurors weren't sequestered. They spent nights and weekends at home with their phones. I think a majority of this trial was played out outside of a courtroom, unfortunately. I think vast majority of this trial was played out on social media. And I think that this trial is an example of that gone haywire, gone amok. And the jury is not immune to that. You think the jury saw it? How could they not? I think even the most well-intentioned juror, it would have been impossible to avoid this. Depp's attorneys reject the notion that social media influenced the jury in any way. They say they believe jurors followed the judge's instructions to not read about the case. They said social media wasn't the problem, Amber was. The Depp lawyer said, called your testimony the performance of a lifetime and said you were acting. What do you say to that? Says the lawyer for the man who convinced the world he had scissors for fingers? Scissors for fingers. Um, first of all, I thought it was Edward Scissorhands.
But also, does she not know how acting works? Because isn't your job is to play a character? But I don't think anyone was running around going, why the fuck is Johnny Depp in court without scissor fingers? Or or not a pirate? Or you know, d- what? Says is the-, the lawyer for the man who convinced the world he had scissors for fingers? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What is this lady talking about? <laughs> so man is like, listen, these lawyers, Camille and Ben, said <laughs> that, you know, you were acting up there. That's the performance of your life. How do you respond? Oh, those are the lawyers of the man who convinced the world he had scissors for fingers? <laughs> Aaron, what the fuck are you talking about, baby? What are you talking about? He Johnny Depp convinced no one that he had scissors for fingers. Mm. Says the lawyer for the man who convinced the world he had scissors for fingers. Did she just say that? Did she just, I gotta rewind that shit. Hold on, we gotta we got listen to it again. <laughs> Did she, what was the question? Let's go to the question. What was the question again? Says, and said you were acting. Or said, All right, here we go. Called your testimony the performance of a lifetime. All right. And said you were acting. Uh huh. Now, what's her what response? Listen to this shit. Says the lawyer for the man who convinced the world he had scissors for fingers. This bitch is crazy. That was a movie. He's not Edward fucking Scissorhead. What the hell is she talking about? Ah. Uh. What? I'm the performer. I had listened to weeks of testimony uh, insinuating that, or saying quite directly that, you know, I'm a terrible actress. Uh, so I, I, I'm, a, I'm a bit confused how I could be both. Coming up, the verdict. What might the impact be? I worry about some of the very, very real fear others may have about coming forward. And what may surprise you? You issued a statement, I still have love for Johnny. Is that still true? After six weeks of Johnny Depp and Amber Heard slugging it out in court, the case went to the jury. It's the day of the verdict. You come into the courtroom. Were you feeling confident? (sighs) That's a great question. I wish I could say yes to that. I want to say yes to you, but it it wouldn't be true. Question, the statement has a defamatory implication about Mr. Depp. Answer, yes. Court is adjourned. Thank Thank you. you. In the end, the jury believed Johnny Depp, awarding him more than $10 million in damages. Amber won a single defamation claim in her countersuit and was awarded $2 million. There's no polite way to say it. The jury looked at the evidence you presented. They listened to your testimony and they did not believe you. They thought you were lying. How could, I'll put it this way, how could they make a judgment? How could they not come to that conclusion? They had sat in in those seats and heard over three weeks of nonstop, relentless testimony from paid employees and towards the end of the trial, randos, (laughs) as I say. So you don't blame the jury? I don't blame them. It wasn't 
I, I don't blame them. I actually understand he's a beloved character and people feel they know him. He's a fantastic actor. Their job is to not be dazzled by that. I, again, how, how could they, after listening to three and a half weeks of testimony about how I was an uncredible person, not to believe a word that came out of my mouth. I'm a hysterical woman. I'm a crazy woman. I can't be trusted over and over again. Johnny Depp was quick to celebrate his victory in a statement that read in part, from the very beginning, the goal of bringing this case was to reveal the truth, regardless of the outcome. Adding, the jury gave me my life back. I am truly humbled. When I asked his lawyers, why do you think you won? The answer I got was, because she never took responsibility for anything she did in the marriage. And as we're sitting here and I watched her cross-examination, there's an answer for everything. Do you feel you should have owned up to more of your own bad behavior that I'm, was revealed in court? I'm glad, actually, you asked me that because you know, there is an answer for these things you say. I said this on the stand. Uh, my, you know, you hear my voice in those audio tapes. It's not the voice I, of me now. That's not who I am now. I did do and say horrible, regrettable things throughout my relationship. Uh, I behaved in horrible, almost unrecognizable to myself ways. There's so much, I have, so much regret. On the first day of the trial, you issued a statement and part of the statement said, I still have love for Johnny. Yes. Is that still true? Yes. After everything? Absolutely. Absolutely. I love him. I loved him with all my heart. And I tried the best I could to make a deeply broken relationship work. And... I couldn't. Amber Heard says she intends to appeal her case, and she's concerned her defeat may be a setback for other women.